welcome back. This is the Dynasty Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Dynasty Press Box News Media Outlet. We have left Craig, or we have left Eric Long in Toronto to play with the Penguins at the zoo. Uh, just Craig and myself again today. Craig, how are you now? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great. We're looking fresh and new, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah. We so have today's Eric, podcast. We have dog. We have dog, not Eric. <laughs> fuzzy dog. <laughs> Focus fuzzy. on the dog. Just put the dog in the chair so we can only Just talk put to him in. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, you really are out of focus, buddy. Get your He's just again, always man. like this now. He's just always blurry now. <laughs> That's what happens when dogs get old. Not a lot of people know that, but they just get dead, fuzzy. You get dead pixels. Right. Yeah. So today's podcast, we are digging into my list of 85 ranked wide receivers. Um, some news obviously coming out. As training camps are opening, about positional battles, who's doing good, who's not. Um, not a lot of news since we last spoke to get to. Uh, the Detroit Lions signed Taylor Decker to a nice three-year deal. Deal um, That pretty much secures a good part of their offensive line for the next few years. Uh, Kevin Zeitler being the lone exception as he's playing out the last year of his contract. Um, but yeah, they got Decker, Ragnow, Sewell, and Graham, and Graham Glasgow locked in for a few seasons. Uh, that consistency on that offensive line is great, and uh, Deckler's a big part of that playing left tackle. Any thoughts on the signing? They've just they've just done such a good job with that roster. Yeah, holy, that's holy I I can't believe like... how some organizations, Dallas Cowboys, let everyone go to the point where their contracts are expiring, and other teams like Detroit have just done such a good job of locking up every key part of that team. And it's got to make a difference in the dressing room, too. Oh, yeah. Because, like, we've heard it every once in a while. Athletes don't really say it too often. They just say, you know, I let my agent worry about that. I just try to play. But that's in the back of their heads. How can it not be? How can it yeah. not be? The fact that you can get all this done early is huge. Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't go to work every day and question our longevity or a contract like these guys do. And no. yes, they make significantly more than we do here, but uh, they they want that security. They want to know where they're going to be for the next four or five years with their families, things like that. So just having yeah. that like peace of mind um, is is just great. And that yeah, like you said, that that culture change in the Detroit locker room from when we were growing up watching football, you know, like. It is just night and day. I love yeah. what they. I love what they're doing there. Yeah, it went from one star on the team that you're just wasting their potential for, and it they just repeated <laughs> that for years and years, decades, and now yeah. it's just like, now it's just whoa, they're not a joke anymore. Yeah, it's, it's like I'm trying to think, what's the biggest highlight before all this? And all I can think of is, friggin' what's his name, the loudmouth on uh, ESPN now, Orlovsky running out of the end zone. <laughs> like that's all I can think of, and then all of a sudden this culture change and all these players are brought in, and it's just all right. Here we go. Yeah, that uh, that zero and sixteen season might have been the best thing that happened to Detroit because they were like, oh, we can't keep doing this. Yeah, but we're not here to wax on about the Detroit Lions. Um, we are going to get into the wide receivers. Uh, we actually are filming or recording this at a good time because. The Madden 25 rankings are starting to slip out. I think they're going to do a couple position groups at a time and release their top 10. And conveniently, the top 10 wide receivers are out. Um, so we have a new member of the 99 club, Tyreek Hill, stepped up. He is 99. Madden then has Justin Jefferson at 98 overall. Third is C.D. Lamb at 96. Uh, tied for fourth, we have A.J. Brown and Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, six, then we have Devontae Adams at 94 overall. Sorry, Brown and St. Brown are 95. Uh, Devontae Adams still hanging in at 94 overall. Jamar Chase down at 93 overall, which I thought was a little curious. Uh, Stefan Diggs still at 92. And then to wrap up the top 10 tied at ninth, we have Mike Evans and Brandon Ayuk at 81 overall. So kind of a, a little mix of some old players, some new players or younger players here. Anything you, anyone you think got shafted out of the top 10? And what are your thoughts there? It's weird that I think Jefferson should be 99. Yeah. I, mean, um, I put a poll up on Twitter today. But like, I was, really? I was like, who got screwed over the most? And I put Jefferson as my top pick. Like, 
he should be a 99. I don't understand how he's 98. He's, he's still the best receiver in the league. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Maybe Madden just skews speed and they give Tyreek a 99 for all that. And But, yeah, that's weird to me. Yeah. For my money, I'm going to be putting it on Jefferson as a from a football perspective over fantasy, obviously I'm uh, we'll go through the rankings on Jeff- Jefferson way below Tyreek Hill, but overall skill, like Jefferson should be the 99 Tyreek should be a 98. And I think yeah. Jefferson should be a bit higher too. And yeah. in my humble opinion. Also, I didn't know that Amon Ross St. Brown has uh, some German nationality with him there. Well, that's good to know. I did not know. That. <laughs> He seems fun... to be the only one <laughs> that does not have an American flag until number 56, Joshua Palmer at 79. Huh. Um, so I guess we are deep diving the Detroit Lions today. <laughs> uh, if anyone's interested, it's uh, they also did the safeties. Uh, they have Jesse Bates, first overall 97. Uh, if you've ever listened to me talk football, you know I absolutely love Jesse Bates. Uh, Antoine Winfield, second, 94. Minka for Fitzpatrick, 93. Jerwin James, Tyron Matthew, both 91s. Buda Baker, 90 overall. Kevin Byard, Kyle Hamilton, who's someone else I wax on way too much about at 89. Uh, Talana Hufanga, sorry, it's been so long I've seen his play that I forgot how to say his name. Uh, he's at 88, and Javon Holland, Holland from Miami is 88 as well. Um, so a good mix of safeties there. We don't really need to dive too deep into that unless you had uh, some deep thoughts on on Kyle um, Hamilton being ra- ranked way too low. Yeah, I switch him with Matthew. Yeah, Tyron exactly. Matthew is not a top five safety anymore. Yeah, even Derwin James, as much as I love him as a player, he's he's not the player he was two three years ago. Yeah. Um. So I would have Cam- Kyle Hamilton much higher based on what he's done since he's come into the league. He is just. I don't like using this word a lot, but he's a bit of a unicorn on defense. Uh, he can do so many things for you. He's crazy. He's crazy. Yeah. All right. Now that I got to talk about Jesse Bates and uh, Kyle Hampson, let's get into wide receivers. Um, so, again, you can find the whole deep breakdown articles on dinespresswalks.com. We're going to run through them real quick. Like I said, I did way too many, so I don't know if we'll get to all of them. Uh, but we'll start. I have... Five players in my t- tier one rankings. I got Tyreek Hill, number one, CD Lamb, number two. I put Amon Ross St. Brown as number three, Justin Jefferson at four, and Jamar Chase at five. What do you think about that first tier? Makes me sad to see Jefferson at four. I agree. That <laughs> it was painful to put him there. I yeah. struggled with it very much to put him that low. Um but I just I you, we all are all aware of the quarterback situation in, in Miami or Minnesota this year, and I just I couldn't justify putting them any higher. Yeah, I think Minnesota's game plan should just be to get him twenty targets a game. I think that's their best chance if they're going to have Darnold or McCarthy. <laughs> just keep throwing it to them. And even since I wrote the rankings, like I I wrote the rankings with the idea that Hawkinson's not coming back until November, right? He's still recovering from his injury. Mm-hmm. Okay, so defenses are already cheating over towards Jefferson even more. And since then, Addison has now had another incident involving the vehicle and a, a, an alleged DUI. I'm, I haven't been updated in the last couple of days of where that stands. But The second one? Yes, he was uh, like the one from last week there. It's his second driving incident. From last year when he was driving. Okay, and, okay. I thought that was the second one this off season. Oh no, no. Like, God. Man, he just seems like take his keys. Take his keys. He seems like a kid that's just not learning. Like this was days after the Vikings tragically lost a teammate due yep. to a, a drunk driving incident. And he is found in his vehicle under the influence. I don't know all the facts, so I'm not trying to, but it just seems like he's making poor life decisions, especially considering the next day he posted a picture of him with a drink in his hand. That's just not what you should be doing when you're given this position. Um, That being said, I think the Vikings are going to not be too happy with them. There's a potential suspension coming if the NFL decides to act fast, which means Jefferson's the only offensive weapon they have, and defenses are just going to smother him every single snap. He's good enough to get open, but I just when you have two, three guys on you with a safety over top, 
you, you, you're limited in what you can do with the ball. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Um, they have Aaron Jones, right? They might have to run a lot of screen game stuff to try to get people over playing and cheat down well just to give them a little bit of space. Yeah. Play action. It's going to be a play action type season for the Vikings. Yeah. Run, yeah. run, run, cheat them up, and then over the top, cross routes. And the play action and getting the ball to the middle of the field is what J.J. McCarthy does on a fairly decent level. He's not an excel- excellent like deep throw, deep passer. Um, so he can theoretically get the ball out to Jefferson in time to create, but yeah, I think it's going to be a bit of a slog. And we say all that, and Jefferson is still the fourth ranked wide yeah. receiver. That just goes to show how good he is. Yeah, it'll be like uh, when Hopkins was stuck in Houston with, with like Brock Osweiler, only mm. weapon, and it's just like doesn't matter. At a certain point, just throw it to him. He'll be he'll get open. Yeah. Anyone else from the top tier that you wanted to delve into? CD Lamb looks like he's getting an extension soon, although that hasn't been finalized as of this yeah. recording. Amon Ra, he like if you're playing full PPR, he even gets a little boost up. Yeah. Um, I was gonna so, say it. if it's PPR, 100% Amon Ra there. Yeah. Um, Jamar Chase again. I expressed my concerns about Burrow's wrist uh, on our last podcast, but not quite sure what. And and he's also not participating in training camp right now, as so he's looking for an extension. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I don't think anything major. I think they're just gonna throw the bag at him, but he's looking to rework a contract. I think so, if you're PPR, you probably go CD Lamb ahead of Tyreek Hill as well. Yes. Yeah, I can I, uh I can I can hear that argument all day long for sure. Yeah. 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 All Hill right. Hill has the big playability, but CD Lamb's just a monster mm-hmm. in the middle of the field, and that's where Dak likes to throw it. So yeah, I just uh, I don't know. I just have this feeling that Mike McDonald's really going to try to get Tyreek Hill to get that two thousand yards this year. Two thousand. I mean, I, he was on pace for it last year for a long time. So yep, we'll see what yeah. happens. Um, he's up there now. Uh, tier two is actually just two players. Um, I kind of separated them from the tier three. We got AJ Brown and Puka Nakua. Obviously, Puka had the insane rookie season, breaking records. Uh, AJ Brown just yeah. been a really consistent. Uh, player for the Eagles. I I haven't double checked this since I last looked, but I'm fairly certain AJ Brown has not missed a game for Philadelphia since he got traded. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's a Tennessee problem, not an AJ Brown problem with the receivers getting injured. <laughs> weird, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he had that incredible stretch last year where his consecutive games of 125 plus yards. Uh, he, if he steps into the Kellen Moore offense as the lead receiver, that offense likes to just target one receiver heavily so brown could have a even further breakout season small tier but uh any thoughts on these two guys no i i mean i agree with the fact that brown has still been healthy for two years and that's he had the same kind of stretch the year before as well where he was just consistently either a touchdown or 100 yards so and then puka is just i mean i remember we did a draft last year and someone took puka early-ish and we were just kind of like what who is this and we just were ripping this guy and then it turns out he was the one paying attention because i guess he was having a pretty good training camp and we just did not pay attention to the rams at all because they had cooper cup why would you pay attention to another receiver yeah so yeah boy were we wrong (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. Uh, like you know you heard the rumblings but it's i mean it's so hard at this type of year at this time of year to separate what is fact and what is just hype, right? And yeah. yeah, I heard that Nakua was looking good in camp, but I mean, you didn't expect that. No. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll like put that little star beside him and yeah. I'll watch him the first few weeks. But I yeah. don't think I got him in any of my leagues because the smart people really paid up with their fab or crazy people drafted him. Yeah. Oh, he was looking pretty good or the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> There is a yeah. question. Uh, I've heard a lot of rumblings that Cooper Cup now another year removed for from injury. He's he's looking really good in camp as well. So he might be back and take some workload away from Nakua, but I don't expect a down take. I think I think he's he's made it clear that he is the alpha receiver there. Yeah. So tier three, um, we go to uh one of the favorites, favorite teams, favorite up and coming teams, uh the Houston Texans for Nico Collins at eight. 
I did not think I would do this, but I put Marvin Harrison at nine. Uh, Garrett Wilson comes in at 10. Brandon Ayuk, 11. Mike Evans, 12. Debo Samuel comes in at 13, just below his teammates. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love I love Collins, but I honestly think after a full season of watching that Tank Dell could end up replacing him by the end of the year again if he's healthy. Um, I have no problem with Harrison going where he is. Yeah, I was, I was curious. I really to don't. I on really it. don't. Murray's gonna throw the. He's gonna. He's gonna throw the ball. Yeah. And this is the type of guy. The last time we saw. I mean, we saw the difference whenever they were playing. Um, Murray's numbers when he was playing with Hopkins and without. And when he was playing with Hopkins, when Hopkins was healthy, he was a monster top five wide receiver. Harrison's got that same throw it to me anywhere I'll catch it kind of ability. So I have no concern with him being guy's so good. Yeah, I'm not he's worried about so that. That's, yeah, he's so good. That's such a good spot for him. Yeah, I all offseason I was listening to other people's rankings, reading other people's rankings, and I was like, these people are crazy. I'm gonna put a Harrison at like 20. He's a rookie. Uh first like first year in the league with a, a new quarterback he's never played with, a new system he doesn't know. And then I just watched went back and watched Tate for like eight minutes and I was like, Harrison's gonna be a top 10 wide receiver. Yeah, he's going to be a target monster. He might. My only concern is he might not get all the touchdowns that we expect because I think Trey McBride is also having a breakout season this year. Um, I kind of have the Cardinals offense penciled in as a top seven in the league. I think they're going to really explode this year. Um, I really like Drew Petzik as their coordinator. And I think Harrison just opens up so, so much for them. Um, so but I, I, I was doing the research and I th thought it was really interesting that if it weren't for Harrison, Malik Neighbors, who was going at the time, I think at 21 um, in ADP, would have been the highest selected receiver. And Harrison is going like a full like three rounds ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit of risk there, but the talent, the talent's gonna be there. So it is it's hard to hard when you get to that this tier to just turn him down over guys like Garrett Wilson, who has dealt with terrible quarterback play and we don't really yeah. know what he looks like if he has adequate play and we don't know what we're getting from Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, um, that's the big question mark. And then we still um, have Ayuk who is very much on the outs a trade. with San Francisco. I don't think <laughs> I don't think they're gonna actually move him. I think he's gonna suit up for one more year. They just have too much leverage over the guy. He's under contract. They're gonna they can use the franchise tag. San Fran traditionally waits the last minute to get, to get deals done, uh, but him and Samuel still play off each other so much that they can't jump up. And then Mike Evans, I'm just done trying to predict the end of his career. That guy is going to put up another 1,000-yard season somehow this year, so yeah. he uh, he sells in at number 12 for me. Yeah, I'm really curious what they do with Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. So there's such... <laughs> It almost seems because they they drafted a pretty damn good receiver this year as well. Um, I'm blanking on the first name, Purcell. Ricky Purcell. Purcell, yeah. I'm huge on Ricky so, Purcell. They have depth at receiver. Yeah, and they still have um, Juwan Jennings, I believe. Yes, potential just signed. Super just resigned Juwan Jennings. Just potential Super Bowl MVP if they had won the game, like yeah. so drawn. Yeah, they're in Juwan. So they don't really I don't know. I'm just I guess I guess I'm just waiting for an injury to come to San Francisco on the defensive side or offensive line or something. And then they end up trading rights. Yeah. Yeah, because it's they do what not they're, need, what they're gonna do. They do not need the help of a receiver at all. But it seems like every year there's a crippling defensive line or offensive line injury for San Fran. Yeah. And they still, because of how good they are and how well coached, they still make it far. But make it a lot easier on the rest of the team if they can just grab someone else for a more position of need and deal from strength. Like, see, so yeah, yeah. Brandon Ayuk. Yeah, I mean, obviously the rumors are out there that he and the commanders both have a mutual interest as well as uh, in Pittsburgh, which Pittsburgh can use someone beside George Pickens. Yeah, that would actually be a pretty good landing spot for him. All right, we'll jump to tier, uh, we're on tier four now. Uh um, yeah. Eight guys here. Um, this is the guy I'm I'm way too high on. His ADP is way low. This is not where you draft him. 
It's <laughs> just where I feel he's going to finish the season at. Right. I got Jaden Reed at 14, uh, ahead of the likes of DK Metcalf at 15, Amari Cooper at 16. Uh, we got DJ Moore in Chicago settling at 17. George Pickens, who we just uh, touched on, at 18. Uh, the old old man of the group, we got Devontae Adams at 19 in, the, in Las Vegas. Drake London at 20. And Chris Olave at 21. So this is this is kind of a lot of the group. Last year we were taking in the second round of, of fantasy drafts, and a lot of them kind of disappointed. Um, so it's they're they're getting a little bumped down this year. Yeah. I mean, everyone believed the hype for Chicago last year when they got DJ Moore, and then they found out that no, it turns out the problem is fields. Yeah. But he still had a pretty solid season. He's still a really good receiver. So we'll see what happens with. With Caleb, he could end up being the guy, right? Yeah. Because he's a guy that can take a screen quickly. He doesn't necessarily need a lot of time or protection from the O line to get open. Um, and then you have a rookie and Keenan Allen who's aging as well, right? So it's, it could end up being a DJ Moore season who finally gets a quarterback who can throw it. Yeah, and the few games he played last year with Fields, he was really, really good. It was the <laughs> Tyler Badgins or the other. Yeah. The rest of them that really sank his fantasy season. And I do remember beginning of the year, the first few weeks, it was frustrating. Because yeah. I, I remember drafting him, and that was with Fields, and his vision, you could clearly tell, was not there because he's running wide open down the seam. It's like, first of all, that should be your first look if you have him in motion in the slot up against like a linebacker. Why aren't you immediately looking at more? So there's minus awareness right there. And he was wide open in the end zone. And he's took – it was one of those classic – Nope, and just started to scramble kind of thing. So you could tell right away there's some frustration. They finally figured it out when the pressure was off, it seemed like. Yeah. But um, I want to hear more about Jaden Reed. <laughs> oh, um, I keep going so, for Because this is, this is where you have, you have a ton of young receivers in Green Bay. A ton. Yeah. So it's more, you're more betting on him being the top guy in green bay because that's an offense that's going to throw way more than they did last year i think yeah he just to, to I me hate he has... running game. i hate the running game <laughs> i hate it Tori aj dylan uh yeah, yeah jenny to me uh, just has all the makings of being their prime x receiver um i know everyone's throwing the stats out of how much his uh, his catches and yards were reduced when christian watson was on the field and christian watson don't get me wrong is a high level player, but I don't believe he's going to stay on the field. This whole thing, this off season that he found out that his hamstrings weigh a different weight. And now he's getting that fixed. Like that's not going to solve the fact that he tears or pulls a hamstring every second game. It's just been too many years of it. I'm out on Watson. Uh, Romeo Dobbs did kind of take over the lead role during the Packers playoff games. And he was fantastic. I think he might lead the team in snaps. Um, when he's healthy, but I don't think that necessarily translates to catches. Uh, Dontavian Wicks, we're definitely going to be talking about later, also looks like a potential breakout star. Uh, I just think Reed is going to be on the field. Um, they love, Matt LaFleur loves getting him the ball in space. And, like he hands it off to him. He does these sneak plays with him. Like Reed is just such a weapon. And LaFleur really looks like he he trusts him and knows how to use him. Um, so I, th- I think he's my biggest breakout player this year. Yeah, I, I kind of think he broke out last year a little bit. It just was towards the end where he didn't really notice. But, yeah, they have so many young receivers all of a sudden. Yeah, it's wild. They have so many good young receivers all of a sudden. I also like both of their tight ends, actually. I love Musca- Musgrave and Kraft. And I know <laughs> Kraft, Kraft is working back for his, like, torn pectoral. But, like, yeah. we'll talk about tight ends probably next week. But I'm drafting Musgrave everywhere. Oh man, no, they if they I don't get a top four tight end, I'm just or a top five tight end. Sorry, I'm just waiting until Musgrave and you take him in the last round and he's going to be great. Yeah, no, this is this team's going to throw a lot more than they did last year for sure. Like, I just Jacobs is fine, <laughs> he's fine. Yeah, no, they have a rookie, but then AJ Dillon's still there eating up space. You know, they're going to give him the ball for two yards of carry, like, yeah. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. You got playmakers. Yeah. They just committed. They just committed to yeah. Jordan Love. You know, that's that's where that offense is headed. Josh Jacobs only has guaranteed money for the season. They're he's not their their linchpin of that offense. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, one other player I wanted to touch on is DK Metcalf. I really think Seattle's offense with a uh, new coordinator, Ryan Grimm, is going to be it's going to be exciting this year. I think they're kind of going to open things up. I think Metcalf is going to eat a lot. I think it's going to be target him often um, with that new kind of faster paced offense. They played a fast pace last year, but they couldn't continue drives. They they faltered on third downs constantly. Um, so Grubb needs to get them over the line. They also had terrible offensive line pe- play and injuries. Um, but I, I'm i not someone who believes that much in Geno Smith, but I think this offense will be tailored to what he can do. And I think DK Metcalf is going to be a big, big benefactor of it. Yeah, I think they need to just throw him the ball more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He only had 66 catches last year. That's absurd. <laughs> 66 catches, and he still broke a thousand. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, give him the ball. Just give him the ball. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what they're doing. Figure it out, guys. He's a monster. Give him the ball. Yeah. All right, so let's jump down to the next tier. Uh, we're down to 22, so we're looking at. You know, some uh, our wide receiver twos, kind of wide receiver three range. We got Jalen Waddell at 22 uh, in that high pit, high pace Miami offense. Devontae Smith rolls in 23. T. Higgins, 24, 25. I have Z Flowers. So, again, that kind of finishes off the run of second round draft picks from last year that all disappointed. Um, we got our new favorite, Tank Dell, who I think if we start getting – Reports that he is back and fully healthy. I'm going to be bumping him up slowly. I think he's going yeah. to have a big year. Uh, Cooper Cup at 27. Michael Pittman, 28. Malik Neighbors, 29. Um, he's the only one that can catch passes in New York, so he's going to get 150 targets. So that puts him at 29 in my rankings. And, yep, the second Green Bay Packer makes his appearance at uh, 30. And Dontavian Wicks. So this is the part of the draft that I always try to decide. What's better to have a number one wide receiver on a team that's maybe not going to be the best passing or the number two of a high passing offense. Yep. And that's just one of those. It's, it's tough. This is where it's, it really depends on what you drafted already at wide receiver. If you already have a number one on a team that like, if you don't have a number one receiver yet, you almost kind of need to grab one. I don't know if you want to have your first wide receiver be at number two on a team. Yeah. You know I, would, I, mean? like, I wouldn't want to like, enter a season with T Higgins as my wide receiver one, as much right? as I like T Higgins, he's just not consistent enough and he's not going to be targeted enough for you, for him to really take you over the top. Right. So are you going to go T Higgins or are you going to try to get a potential number one or a number one receiver on a starting team in Michael Pittman? Yeah. Right. You know, like uh, that kind of thing. But if you already have, someone like A.J. Brown or Nakua, maybe you can get away with grabbing a T. Higgins or a Jalen Waddle. Yeah, and you just have those those right? last yeah. games from them that kind of take you over the top because you already have a very high, consistent floor with those other guys. It's it's a very interesting, and you, I'm glad you brought that up because in this range, I had such a hard time ranking these guys. Like, Drake London gets a bump up to the next year, and so does Chris Olave because I see them as target dominant, and Devontae Adams, actually, for that part, but then I had to move Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins down into a, a different tier because I just the target share is just lower for guys like that. That I just I don't see them like having that potential. Like they're being drafted at their ceiling, whereas those other guys can take that next step forward. Yeah. It's why Amari Cooper keeps on going where he's going. Yeah. It's because he's the number one receiver. Do I think he's better than like Devontae Smith as an overall? Probably not. Yeah. I I, I probably take I I probably take like skill one versus one. I probably take Devontae Smith at this point in their careers, but goddamn, if Mario Cooper's not the number one or like there's no one else. It's yeah, I'm uh, I'm so not scared away to... by the Jerry Judy edition in Cleveland. No, right? <laughs> so it's it's Cooper still. Yeah, hundred percent. It's gonna be Cooper, it's gonna be Cooper a lot. Uh They'll try to convince us that David Njoku's going to have a year, but I don't see it for the full season. So, yeah, that's why Murray Cooper is up that high. Uh, tier six, kind of a weird mix. We got some uh, some old reliable veterans and then a couple of rookies that I'm I'm super into, actually. 
Um, so 31, I have Chris and Kirk. He is just going to be super, super reliable this year. Um, he is going to be catching all the balls in Jacksonville. They obviously drafted Brian Johnson Jr., who's not too much further down the rankings. They signed Gabe Davis. But Kirk just works underneath. And I think fantasy drafters are forgetting that two years ago, Kirk was really, really good. It's just last year they just tried to over-target Ridley and Kirk dropped off. Um, so there's him at 31, 32. We have Keenan Allen in Chicago. Uh, with Stephon Diggs, 33. He's the third Houston Texan to come off the board in my rankings. Uh, Calvin Ridley, 34, now in Tennessee. We got scary Terry McLaurin with the Commanders at 35. Uh, one of my most drafted rookies in Lad McConkey at 36 in uh, the Chargers. And Roma Dunze coming in right behind him at 37. So two Bears in there, a couple of rookies. How do you think about uh, adding one of these guys to your team? I mean, kind of talked about it last time. Christian Kirk's probably going to be the number one receiver. Yeah. And he's far down, but they're still going to throw the ball. Yeah. And you mentioned they did try to feed really quite a bit at the beginning, but maybe just past the one quarter mark, week five, week six, week seven, it's they they kind of stopped and started going to Kirk, and he just kept on racking up numbers again. It's going to be yeah. the same thing. Yeah, again, he's another guy that gets a boost if you're playing full PPR as opposed to half or zero. Um, yeah. He's going to get a, he's going to get targeted 10, 12 times a game, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Diggs is just going to be good if there's an injury because it's just going to limit. Like, it's, it's just going to be one of those things. He's He could take him a little bit of time. He's starting to get older, so he could be that veteran move the sticks guy at this point. Could be wrong, though. Never know. It's worth yeah. a shot. It's worth a shot at that in this area. Yeah, it's curious to see how it shapes out in, in Houston at the start of the season. If Tingdale is going to be doing, like, ready for week one, if he's going to be taking a full snap percentage. Um, I think Diggs' role declines as the season goes on. Um, but for, for the start of the season, I think he's going to be good. I just, I can't, I can't draft him where he's being taken right now. No. Um, he's just no. going way, way too early. I'm with you. Um... The other guy, Lad McConkey, is the other guy that I wanted to touch on. Uh, yeah, so Lad McConkey, he's he's a quarterback's best friend. Yeah, and they kind of lost a lot of receivers. <laughs> yeah, and I know they're bringing Roman offense, run, run, run. Let's stack up on a bunch of old Ravens running backs. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's kind of he's he could be the guy. He could be the guy. I mean, like who's the number one from last year? Jordan Palmer. Yeah, Joshua like, Palmer. Against, or Joshua Palmer, sorry. Um, yeah, it's the against. only one left on the roster that's caught a touchdown from Justin Herbert. Yeah. There's nobody else. It is wide open for Vladimir yeah. Tongi. Wide open. That's a guy that you want to take a flyer on. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's going a little, little too late in drafts for his potential upside. There's, a, there's it has been a lot of talk that Joshua Palmer will be the, the number one. In LA, but I think I I just don't see a world where McConkey doesn't pass him four or five games into the season, and is yeah sure it's going to be a run heavy offense, but they were throwing at like seventy percent last year. It's going to be fifty fifty. You're not. I don't know why people are thinking that they're going to run the ball eighty five percent of the time and only throw fifteen percent of the time. Like they have to pass the ball. They have Justin Herbert. Yeah, there's going to be a passing offense in LA. I'm telling you that right now. It has to. It has to. If not, that is going to be one of the biggest talking points of the season about yeah. Hollywood City City. Yeah, I like. I don't think they're going to win a lot of games this year. I think. I think Harborough came in and just he's ready to strip it down to the to the roots and rebuild. I think they're they're going to be really good in two years. Say, I, I really like what he decided to do there. But if they're going to keep stay competitive, and Lab McConkey is going to be a big part of that. Yeah. Tier seven. We uh, finally have a chief on the board. Uh, 38, <laughs> we have uh, Deontay Johnson from Carolina. 39, Jackson Smith and Ajigaba in Seattle. Uh, Marquise Brown at 40. Rashi Rice at 41. So two, two chiefs back to back as we kind of wait to see what's going on there. Uh, Chris Godwin. Who is, what do you mean? <laughs> Chris Godwin, who's uh, <laughs> potentially going back to the slot in Tampa Bay at 42. 43, we have DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, as he is still chugging out his career in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, is he the first Titan? 
Uh, no, no, I have Calvin, Calvin Ridley, Ridley at thirty-four. Okay. Um, yeah, this is one of those things that's kind of tough because I actually really like all these receivers in their positions that they are, but Deontay Johnson has to be. I mean, he's there just for the targets. The same kind of thing that we were talking about earlier. Number one, our receiver. Carolina's going to have to pass the ball. They're going to have to figure out a way to get Bryce Young time to pass the ball. Uh, I like Deontay Johnson this year. He's he's as, as an, an elite level early separator, which is what Bryce Young needs to be successful. Uh, they gave him a boost in their interior offensive line. So hopefully he can, you know, see past it this year. Uh, doesn't have blockers in his face constantly. Um Johnson is so far down in the rankings. He's at 38 because he's not going to score touchdowns. And that's what we want in fantasy. He's going to get a lot of catches. I'm expecting he's going to get 110, 120 receptions this year, or sorry, targets this year. Um, he's going to be a high level target guy, but just not, not really going to put up the numbers that we want. Craig to you, we got 30 or sorry, number 40 and 41 Marquise Brown, Rashi Rice. How much do you hate me for ranking them this low? I don't, because it's kind of <laughs> hard to tell right now. It's kind of hard to tell. I think if I think if there wasn't a chance of suspension, Rice would be probably higher. Hundred percent, he would be. I think way right now higher. we're just waiting to see. Like this ranking could be completely different. Yeah, because you haven't finished. He finished wide receiver twenty two last year, and you have to realize that was basically the second half yeah. of the season, really, where he took off. And by all accounts, he seems to be doing exactly that in training camp so far, it sounds like. Um, and it's not just his screen bubble plays. He actually had <laughs> – it was interesting because it looked to me on the replay, like it was like, oh, or the highlight, that's a clear push off. But it was still a 65-yard go route touchdown over McDuffie. Hmm. And it's just one of those, like, is this one of those subtle little push offs that receivers like Lam and Jamar Chase kind of get away with? that he's kind of starting to learn. And uh, funny enough, he's been training with that same coach that they have in the offseason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so, very big on on Rice this year if he's on yeah. the field. Um, I, hated, I hated his route tree last year. I just don't think they let him run enough routes. I think he's way better than what he showed last year. Um, and like you said, if we get word of a suspension, non-suspension, or word that – like it, it's getting to the point where this could be bumped until next year. Yep. So if that happens, Rashi Rice is very much going to jump 20, 25 spots in my rankings. I think he's going to be huge. So. Marquise Brown, Xavier Worthy are going to stretch the field, and him and Travis Kelsey are going to just cook underneath. Yeah. I think there's enough of a throw with two speedsters on the field at the same time that they're going to have to have two safeties deep a lot. Yeah. 100%. A lot. So. And if the one time they decide they want to throw a blitz and they're going to man up or try to disguise it, Chiefs run enough motion that they'll be able to tell who's in man and who's not. And one of Worthy or Brown is going to beat someone deep. So it's just going to be very much a pick your poison this year. Yeah. It could be a lot of fun if everyone stays healthy on that team. It could be <laughs> a lot of fun to watch them again this year. Yeah, I I, I hate to say it, but like, I, I really expect another – explosion of the Chiefs offense this year I think they just they built it well I still think they need to find a, a light left tackle to start the season but there's there's plenty of there's plenty of options veteran options in free agency I mean, at this time of year which is very weird so they can still bring back somebody solid like solidify that line and then like I think that often like Andy Reid's just gonna be like oh you guys didn't think I had an offense last year watch this and he's just yeah. gonna go to town um, so yeah, I'm really, really big on Kansas City as an offense as a whole until we get some more clarity at the receivers. They're kind of bumped out a bit. Yep, pretty well. Take your pick and hope you best, right? That's it. <laughs> like they're worth throwing a dart at, especially this late. Like just figure out mm -hmm. what you want and then let's let's go from there. All right. So uh speaking of going from there, tier eight. At number 44, we we're back to Minnesota with Jordan Addison. Um, we were kind of just talking there. Addison started off the season with a really, really high touchdown total, really faded off the rest of the season, kind of disappointed fantasy owners. Uh, 45, 45, I have Josh Downs. Um, he was he was fairly good last year with, with Anthony Richardson. I think he could take away some more touches from Pittman. They didn't really bring in more competition. 
So he has a pretty solid role. 46, Jamison Williams in Detroit. 47, rookie Brian Thomas Jr. in Jacksonville. 48, the third chief. We have Xavier Worthy to see what he can do. Um, just to touch on why Marquise Brown is ahead of him, it's because Xavier Worthy is a raw rookie. I think Marquise Brown is going to take a lot of the touches. Xavier Worthy is going to be kind of a later round um, dart throw, see if he can see if he can do something in the second half of the season. Uh, and then we – I should have fact-checked this, but this might be the lowest I have. No, it's not because uh, Denver Broncos have a receiver that's lower. But Buffalo Bills come in with their first-ranked receiver at 49 and their second-ranked at 50 with Curtis Samuel and Keon Coleman, a rookie who is uh, coming into Buffalo. So a little, uh, little late tier, some excitement, some rookies, some explosive talent in this group. Yeah, um, this is pretty well like boomer bust kind of games for yeah. most of these players. Um, the one person, if I had to pick one from the these players i'm picking coleman mm. you have to josh allen's gonna throw the ball i think that's the one guy that has the tools to be a go up and get it go through the middle of the field kind of player i think the number one receiver this year for buffalo is going to be kincaid yes but if you mm. have to pick a wide receiver on the team i'm picking Coleman. yeah and i can i can get behind that um i just my my problem is that they they seem to want to use Coleman as an outside X receiver, and that's not where he excels. But you have Curtis Samuel and Shakir and Kincaid that all are really good on the interior. So you kind of need Coleman to be outside. Um, and I think that's just a big step for him to take from college to go to the NFL and kind of take on that bigger role. It will be. So I I think he's the most talented, although, you know, I do have a secret love for Curtis Samuel. I think he's really good. Um, it's also Joe Brady in Buffalo, where Curtis Samuel was used a crap ton back in Carolina. Um, so he has familiarity with his type of offense. Um, but, yeah, Keith Coleman, again, like, might come on late. But I just, I, I, I just find the Buffalo offense to be really cluttered right now, and I can't figure it out. Yeah. The only reason I'm not big on Samuel is because I think they have a younger, faster version of him and Shakir. Yeah. I think it's the same style of receiver. So I can see them both kind of sharing targets, whereas there's only one Keon Coleman. There's only one big dude on the side. Yeah. I mean, it, I totally get the point. I'm just, I'm just having trouble drafting any of the Buffalo receivers, to be completely honest. Like, I'm going to target Dalton Kincaid and... That's it. Or, yeah. Sorry, Dalton K, Josh Allen, and then that's it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, who knows what's going to happen in Buffalo. Um, Brian Thomas Jr., also another guy worth throwing a flyer on, see what happens. Yep. Uh, but let's jump to Tier 9. Um, tiers are getting pretty big here, I'm not going to lie. Actually, this is the final tier. So this is uh, my 51 to 85, 85th ranked players. Uh, yeah. So we got Joshua Palmer, 51, Johan Dotson, uh, out of Washington at 52. Cortland Sutton breaks the uh, the drought for the Denver Broncos at 53. Uh, we had touched on it prior to recording that uh, Sutton, despite his good touchdown totals, actually did not finish as a very good uh, fantasy fantasy wide receiver. Uh, we got Jacoby Myers in Las Vegas. 54, 55, Romeo Dobbs uh, from Green Bay. 56, Brandon Cooks, because the Dallas Cowboys need some wide receiver too. Uh, Rashid Shaheed, 57, 58, Gabe Davis, 59, Tyler Lockett, uh, 60, Khalil Shakir. And we start getting into, oh, yeah, the uh, the last team to actually put in some receivers. Demario Douglas and Jalen Polk from New England at 61, 62, respectively. Uh, let's just kind of cut it out there so we don't just list all the players. Anyone from this kind of group that you're looking at, thinking about taking late, I think we kind of – Chuck Sean Palmer that we're not bigger believers in him, but anyone here that you think might take a big step here? I mean, big step, I don't know. <laughs> Shakir's going to get more targets this year than he did last year, just based off of Diggs not being there. Yeah. Sutton, if you want to take a flyer and hope he gets a touchdown, that's basically all you're getting from him. Like, he could get three catches for 40 yards and a touchdown. Like he's basically a tight end at this point. Yeah, he's yeah. a low end tight end if you're looking at stats. So if you're real thin, you can go for there. 
I wish I thought of that description because that is perfect. That is exactly what Sutton is. He is a red zone threat. He's not really doing much down the field. Yeah. He'll catch a couple of balls, but yeah, he just, he absorbs touchdowns. I don't know how this Broncos offense is going to look. Um, I have my own thoughts on how long Sean Payton's going to last there, but yeah, he is just a, a red zone monster that I'm not putting any stock into this year. Yeah. No, the, the two guys that jump out to me are the guys that are names where, I mean, you have Cooks who still randomly shows up in big games, and you have Tyler Lockett. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things where if it's this late, why not? Why not yeah, see exactly. what happens based off of history? Yeah. And Dobbs wouldn't be a bad choice either. If you don't have any Packers yet and you really think that offense is going to take <laughs> off, why not? Yeah, when I'm this late, if I haven't selected the two other uh, yeah, you're, younger you're players taking... that I like, I'm, I'm definitely targeting Dobbs. I think he, he is... He's going very late in drafts, so he's worth a flyer on if you can stay on the yeah. field. They obviously like him. Um, Demario yeah. Douglas, Jalen Polk. Douglas looks to be the lead in a new bad New England offense. Jalen Polk is going to be good eventually. I don't, I can't see it happening this year. Um, so we'll keep it's... scrolling down. We got Adonai Mitchell from Indianapolis, another rookie at sixty three. Another rookie right behind him, Jermaine Burton in Cincinnati. Uh, keep going with rookies. We got two more. We got Trevon Baker in New England at 65. 66 is Ricky Pearsall, uh, who I've already talked about. Christian Watson, not really liking. I have him at 67. Roman Wilson, uh, another rookie in Pittsburgh, who kind of has to be Pittsburgh's wide receiver, too. Uh, then we go to Michael Wilson in Arizona, Tyler Boyd over in Tennessee. He also knows that offensive coordinator very well. So that's, that's kind of an intriguing option. Very, very late in your drafts. Uh, let's do three more and then we'll, we'll cut it off. Tyler Boyd, Jerry, Judy, Zay Jones go 70, 71, 72. Sorry. I meant to go add Elijah Moore into that mix. Yeah. Too many numbers, too many names. Starting to lose <laughs> here, so we're, we'll, we'll we'll touch quickly on this group. But if there's anyone you're interested in, any of those rookies seem kind of intriguing to you. I know you've already talked about Pearsall. Yeah, I mean he's not going to do much though, unless something happens with this. This is the injury replacement group yeah. here coming up. The I one name that, that might about, be. I feel that way about say, Jermaine, Jermaine Burton too. He is yeah. he is incredibly talented. He dropped in the draft because he has an overbearing father, is everything I've heard. <laughs> it's the type of guy that, like, goes into is the that... locker rooms where he's not meant to be, <laughs> talks, yells at coaches, does that kind of stuff. Yeah. This is just what I've heard. I don't have any inside information. I'm not saying this is actually the case. But he dropped in drafts because of his family. He is supremely talented. But he's also behind Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And uh, Yoshivas is really good and has done really good in training camp so far. So Burton has some work to do, but if Higgins gets moved out or something happens and he can beat out Yoshivas, he, he has Joe Burrow as his quarterback. So I, I, I really believe in the talent of Burton. I just, I'm not sure if this is the year for it. Yeah, I can see that. Um, the one other person that would be curious to look at would be Michael Wilson, Arizona. Yeah. That's the one other guy. He had a stretch last year where he was showing up pretty good. Um, see what happens. If this is going to be an offense that's going to throw the ball a lot more, they're going to need someone else other than Harrison. He might be a guy that steps up across from him, just a like good number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's someone I want to target late in most of my drafts. I just want to see what that Cardinals offense looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's yeah, he's a, he's a really good option. All right, let's uh, let's wrap it up with the last few rankings. I have Quentin Johnson of the Chargers at seventy four. I don't even think he's gonna get on the field. Um, he's probably gonna drop off my rankings next time I do them. I got Marvin Mins Jr. Oh, this was one point I wanted to bring up earlier with Rashid Shahid uh, specifically, and now Marvin Mims reminds me of that. Look at your fantasy league settings and if you count kick return yards this might be a different year for that with the new rules and those might become way more relevant um there's a few leagues that are coming out that like super prioritize that so like guys like Rashid Shahid who should be a lead returner 
and Marvin Mins Jr., who is just an explosive speedster. Those are kind of like players to keep an eye on, see what your league settings are. Anyway, just an interesting little twist. If you're yeah. starting a new league, try to look at that because I'm I'm like really intrigued with how the kickoffs are going to look this year. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, so sorry. After Marvin Mims, we go Adam Thielen, Carolina. He's great start to last year. He is just too old, and he got replaced already. Uh, Xavier Leggett, also in Carolina, rookie. Sean Bateman, Baltimore. I don't think a player has been more hyped than Harbo has hyping Bateman, but until I see him play a full season, I'm not taking him on any of my teams. Yeah. Uh, Demar- Demarcus Robinson in LA with the Rams actually had a really, really strong finish to the season. Malachi Corley, another rookie in the Jets, is just a weapon. Um, don't know if it'll translate to the NFL or if the Jets are smart enough to use it, but he is going to do some things. Kendrick Bourne, New England Patriots, I uh, probably have him too high. I don't even think he's fully back healthy. Jalen McMillan, Tampa Bay, Luke, McCaff- Luke McCaffrey, Washington Commanders, Jalen Hyatt, New York Giants, Wondell Robinson, New York Giants, finish off my rankings. If you're drafting these guys, you've got your league is really deep. Deep. That's all I can think of. Because <laughs> I hopefully will not have any of them on my team. Yeah. <laughs> After the draft, yeah, huge uh, in the in LA. He's already there's already talks that he's not even going to be the, one of the top three three receivers on a non passing offense. Um, so he's just out. Jalen McMillan would be great if they weren't talking about moving Godwin back into the slot in Tampa. McMillan's a great slot receiver, but if Goodwin's are Godwin's already doing that job, he's kind of becomes irrelevant. And I literally just only put Luke McCaffrey on my rankings because one, he's Christian's brother. And two, he has been the first one to show up at every one of the commander's OTAs with Jaden Daniels. Um, and they're the last ones to leave. So I just really like how he already seems to be committed. He knows, he knows what it takes to make it in the NFL. And I mean, we all went through it last year with Puka joining the breakfast club with Matthew Stafford. I'm not, even trying to remotely say that Luke McCaffrey is going to do that this year, but doing things like that kind of earn you credit with a team and with your quarterback. So he's going to build up something that he might, I don't know, worth a dot dart throw if you're in a like four or five wide receiver league. Yeah. Where it helps is if there's an injury, he's going to slot in and potentially have immediate chemistry with a guy already. Yeah. And I mean, as much as I think he is way better than what he performed last year, John Dotson had an awful season and just ran routes for no reason. So McCaffrey, I mean, if that keeps going that way, McCaffrey can step in and play some snaps. Giants Washington, receivers. yeah, Washington can't afford to be seniority friendly. Yeah, they need to win. They need to win. Whoever's best is going to be playing. They need to develop their team. That's yeah. What all right, so that was uh, probably too extensive. That's 85 wide receivers that we went through. Uh, hopefully your leagues don't need to drop this many. Craig, who are you taking? Top wide receiver. If Christian McCaffrey's on the board, are you going wide receiver? Or what are you, where, where are you going from there? If Christian McCaffrey's on the board? Off the board, sorry. Off the board. Yeah. Again, PPR. Man. Um, I really I, put it on the spot I'm, on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably I'm probably gonna go land. Yeah. But and that's more just volume related. I think there's less weapons in Dallas than there are in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't argue against that. I think Lamb is in for another another big season. He's going to have a new contract behind him, and yeah, and Dak is going to be playing for one. So I think Lamb is in for a monster season, like we talked about with Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is however old he is, and they're wide receiver too. So another big year coming for CD Lamb. I think so. Well, thank you so much for your time, Craig. Can't wait to uh, talk running backs, tight ends next week with you. I can't um, wait get those to talk out about before I. Uh, Sorry? Can't wait to talk about tight ends. 